Today is April 30th, 2024. We can now go ahead and start the Vision and Strategic Planning Committee. Ms. Cindy, will you please call roll? Mr. Piazza? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Mr. Anthony? Here. Mr. Toller? Here. Ms. Richards? Mr. Duncan? All right. So we have uh, three items on the agenda tonight. Uh, one item is a repeat from the last uh, Vision Strategic Planning. See, as we kind of ran behind on that one due to the capital outlay. Uh, all of you should have received the student dress code survey that was sent out over Easter break. Uh, inside of the survey, you will find uh, all of the input from students, parents, and staff. Uh, I want to say we had exactly 748 staff members that took the uh, survey. 3,900, almost 4,000 parents took the survey and a large number of the population of students, 5,000, 52% took the survey. Uh, throughout the survey, they asked questions concerning um, our current dress code and the state of which it is. Uh, the, the survey went out to elementary on up, and if you look throughout that packet, you'll find majority of the people who took the survey found that we needed some revisions into our current dress code policy. Uh, some of the questions was, in your opinion, do you currently think dress code policy is effective and contrib contrib contributes to a lear positive learning environment? 52% said no. Now, you also have taken to account that majority of this is student-based, but I'm going to encourage my fellow board members to look at this data and understand, yes, we are, we have constituents to worry about, but our main job is to focus on students as well. Um, so throughout this survey, you will find that majority of the answers are going to be abundantly clear that our dress code policy is not in a better term where it needs to be according to student and parent alike. Uh, I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but as you can read, do you believe the current dress code policy is fair to all students? The answer 62% is no. Um, if you say, how well do you think current dress code policy is enforced? You had 2,800 students say very f familiar and a lot say not. Um, would you prefer a standardized dress code? And a lot of them said standard, uh, a non-standardized dress code. You had 69% say they would not want a unified dress code. Uh, would you like to see any changes to that dress code policy for the next school year? And you had 80% of all participants of the survey put yes. Okay. And so what the only reason why I want this data to be shown is so board members can get a full picture of what our constituents and students are feeling among the parish. This was done across parish lines, not just in one district above the other. It's very clear that we have some issues with our dress code, whether we like it or not. Now, as far as the overall approach of it, that's what the board is to determine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move. Does anybody have any discussions on item A? We're gonna go ahead and move to item B. So, after looking at the survey, I'd ask the administration to provide us as a board so we can give a pretty a full rounded view of what we're looking at. Uh, I've asked for them to supply the last five years of disciplinary referrals for dress code. If you look at the first one on the document, you'll see 2021 to 22. Punch Tula High School had 399 referrals total for dress code, and everyone else had pretty much minimum. Amy High won. Hammond High 2, which kind of is very concerning to me, 2, uh, Independence Middle 1, Kentwood High 4, LaRanja High 6. Uh, if you go to the next school year, Miss Cindy, we've got 2022 to 3. The numbers have kind of upticked. Punchville High School had 502. Hammond High had 17. Kentwood High, four. LaRanja High, 28, with a grand total of 641 for that year. If you scroll down to 2023 to 24, our current school system year, Hammond Eastside Upper had 264. 
Punchola High School had 229, and Hammond had had five. The reason why I'm, I wanted to make sure we attach this document is to show that we're all over the scale on some of these. We have certain schools really abiding by the dress code policy, enforcing it, and writing up referrals. And we have a lot of them that doesn't seem to really put it on the docket. And it, you can't run away from data. The data's here. Hammond High and Punchola High have about the same amount of student population. Hammond High has five referrals for dress code, and Punchola High has 229. That's an alarming number for me. Do I have any questions on the, the discipline record, or any comments that want to be made over the discipline data for dress code? I was just going to ask, who, who sent this to you? Um, that yes, that was you. And oh, it, was in a different it was different format, but they had okay. student names and stuff, okay. so we okay. altered it to put it here. Mr. Toller? Yeah, I think that was probably the most, you know, I know dress code is always a hot topic, and almost a no-win situation but the differences in those reports shows that we are not being fair across the district either Pachatula has all the problems or we're not checking everybody everywhere correct so yeah, I don't know I know that's a big statement to make but uh, the proof is in the pudding as far as what the numbers say any other comments? They're, it looks like they're really not enforcing the dress code to me. <laughs> well, also you have to look at the number. You know, Punch Tool High has 2,200 students, where a smaller school would have less numbers. So yeah, yeah but percentages, has yeah, Hammond is the same. Smaller school. It's not Hammond as big has as almost the same. Though. Yeah, I'm t I'm talking about the smaller schools. Yeah, when there is something to be said about that, and I know that this, they're weighted numbers, but still, there, there's definitely some. Well, Hammond Eastside's principal was also a Punchatula High School assistant. I mean, Punchatula Junior High assistant principal last year. This year, she's at Eastside. So, and my biggest concern with these numbers the is, and I preach this continual times, and and we'll we'll let the rest of the board make their own comment on that. But my biggest thing is I'm my biggest pet peeve is when we write a policy up here. And it is very clear that it's not being enforced or it's just not it's getting on the back burner really undermines what we're doing here so if we're not going to enforce a policy why have the policy if we're not going to if we're going to spend days on end talking about the length of a skirt but we're not going to check it why is it even in the policy that's my biggest argument and i am all about helping administrators take one less load off of their chest but at the same time, we have to have order, and these numbers show if we can't even address what we currently have on the books, what would happen if we open that, that, that gate and let it have free range? That's my biggest concern. Well, that's, that's one thing I was going to ask. So if we go with the majority of the students wanting no uniform policy, <laughs> we still have to have rules. Yeah. So, I mean, it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. We still have to have a skirt length. We still have to have no holes in jeans. We still have to have, if you're going to tuck your shirt in, if you're not going to tuck your shirt in. I mean, it's still basically the same rules, but just letting them wear whatever they want to wear. Yep. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, um, see the point. Yeah, you just made an excellent point. So, you know, one of the things we changed last year was the length of the skirts. And the biggest reason we did that is because everybody was wearing short skirts. The purpose of a uniform, one of the biggest purposes, in my opinion, is to make it easy for our, not easy necessarily, but we, we put it the same across the board. It makes it easy for the administration. They're not spending two hours a day going over dress code violations. Any deviation from what we currently have, in my opinion, is going to, they're going to spend three and four hours going over dress code every morning. So um, I'm getting a little ahead of ourselves when we start going over this. Um, I guess I'll ask that question when we get to it. My point is, you know, everybody was, the, the, the links kind of went up over time the manufacturers were making shorter skirts we have to make it easy for our administrators so that was the purpose behind that and then I think if you take the uniforms away and they can wear whatever they want that's not going to be easy for our administrators so that's kind of my opinion on that I think what you're gonna have also is just like at um, Southeastern they show up in their pajama bottoms I mean do we really is that the kind of can of worms we want open I just and that's what this committee is for. So this committee, just so everybody knows, what on item C, when we get to that point, these are not things we have to agree on tonight. 
These are just things that we are taking in and to send up the chain to policy for further revision or further discussion. We got the data saying people need that want to see change. We're giving them that opportunity to have a voice and to speak and for us as a board to really come together and really look at moving forward the next 10 years. Do we have any other discussion before we go to item? I'll make one more point about the data. The data is mostly students. If you polled a whole bunch, uh, this, not comparing students to inmates, however, if you went to a jail and you, and you polled the inmates, you said, y'all want steak dinners? 80% of them are gonna say, yeah, we, we want steak dinners. Agreed. So if, it depends on who the data is coming from. If you're asking people who sell uniforms and people who wear uniforms and people who purchase uniforms and people who get kids dressed every morning, the data is gonna be completely different than what we saw. You know? Mr. Flynn. Yes, I would just like to say, you know, don't mind the conversation, and we certainly should have this, and we can have it in vision, but anything that needs to be changed in our policy manual on student dress codes, discipline, and things of that matter, versus we're going to have to send it to the stakeholders, have their recommendations, we're going to need the administrator's recommendations, and then we're going to have to have a meeting of the entire board to decide whether we want to change the policy or not. So again, I'm not opposed to, to discussion tonight, but I don't think this committee can, can make any motions or decide anything pertaining to policy manual and policy revisions. So this would not be voted on to be approved for total enactment. It would be approved to go to policy. It would go to the policy committee from this committee. Right. Anything else? All right. We're going to go to item C. So item C, you have two options for dress code. And again, guys, I'm not going to tell you which way to go or which way not to go. You could even vote to not do any of these options. Uh, these options I put together to kind of give both sides kind of some talking points and see both sides of the aisle. Uh, option number one, you have our current dress code policy with slight revisions. If you look at the revisions, these are things that we've kind of taken across the board in the past few years, heard complaints on, and have kind of put into the process of maybe changing a few things to make it more modern. Uh, again, tonight we're not adopting any of these. These are not things that we have to agree on. These are not things that we will may or may ever even put into our policy. It's just to discuss and bring it to a policy committee, if any of these options. Uh, if you look at some of the revisions, you'll see under dress code violation, I mean dress code regulation, you have the piercings. Right now a big issue is a lot of kids have nose rings. A lot of people have that. But they wear a stud. And the biggest complaint I got when I was a teacher was, well, if I take it out, I'm, my nose ring is going to close up. So administrator, let them wear clear studs. But in our policy, that's not allowed. So that's one revision. Another one you see students who participate in extracur extracurricular activities. I know Mr. Toller had brought this up at one point, that they should be allowed to wear their their uh, jerseys on Fridays for game day. Our band members can wear their jerseys on Friday for, for game day. Cheerleaders can wear their outfits on game day. That was another revision in here. What, what about five? Is that number five, let's see. It's no, it's, it's so number five, if you see uh, short shirt tails must be tucked in. Okay. No hoodies allowed in school campus. Oh, so the no hoodies on school campus, I just took it out of there and put it in the back. Where it, where it belongs. It's, the hoodies are still going to be outlawed. They're not, okay. that's not up for discussion. Okay. I mean, it is. It can go to policy and be done, but that's not in these revisions. Um, 13 was one that I got asked about a lot from administrators as I walked campuses was spirit days on Fridays, allowing them to wear their spirit shirts and jeans. That would be something that we can approve to do every Friday, would be a spirit shirt that is designed by the school and produced by the school so the school can make money and let them wear their spirit shirt and jeans. Uh, the jeans would again have the same protocol that we have for jean day. No holes, no crazy designs, blue jeans only. Um, 
Let's see what's some other maidens here. See the note. If you look under outer garments, you'll see on the second page, I think, third page, outer garments. You'll see the no hoodies are allowed on campus or school buses was moved there. Okay. Uh, jumpers, skirts, and skorts. Everything pretty much remained the same except we eliminated the. Uh, we took skorts away from shorts and put it with the skirts and put in there that uh, if I found this in our St. Tammany and, and Livingston protocols, if walking or sit is, sitting causes jumper skirts or skort, skorts to rise more than three inches above the knee. That's how they did it in St. Tammany. That's how they did it in Livingston. Um, and that's really about it. I mean, there's some little things here and there, which I'd ask y'all to go read on your own time. If you haven't already, it was sent to you, I think, a week ago. Um, but this is option number one. This is pretty much the most calm, collective version that you could think of, minus a few things. This would be something you could send to policy and have further discussion on it through policy. And then if agreed upon, you would adopt it to the main board and go from there. Option number two is a little more drastic. Option number two is pretty much the same guidelines that St. Tammany uses. They allowed their high schools to make the decision on whether or not they wanted to follow the, the district protocol for dress code. If you, didn't, if you decided you did not want to follow their district code for uh, dress code, they had set guidelines for what you can and cannot wear. And it is only for high school level. It would not be for K through eighth only your high school level. The current dress code that they have right now is a guideline set and if you look through that packet you'll see some of their guidelines. Body piercings are limited to ears only. Students must wear on display. They cannot wear and sell jewelry and gang related items. Um, haircuts have to be a certain way. Hair must be clean. Facial hair, no mohawks. It, I mean it's similar to what a dress code is. It just it doesn't outline for shirts, pants, and stuff like that. It just gives you an outline of what you can and, not, can and cannot wear, like pajama robes, blankets, stuff like that you can't have. Again, I, I, I would refer you that you've had this for a week. I, I don't want to have to go over every line. I don't think anybody wants to do that tonight. The only thing I'm asking to this committee, and I'm doing what I was asked to do, is to be fair. If this is something, if one of these options is something you'd like to move forward with it, I would like to refer one of them to the policy committee. If it dies there, that's fine. I think it's just we are doing our due diligence as a board to have a deeper discussion on these and I tried to provide the most fair options to the board that we could provide. So I'm asking tonight to either adopt one or the other option and send it to the policy committee or reject it all together and it's done. Do I have a motion for any of the options? I would like to make a motion to table it and send both of them to policy so we can debate it there and we can move forward to something to the board. So you want to send both to policy? Yeah. Let's debate it in dress policy and move forward. Excuse me. Dress code's already been referred to policy. Yeah. So are you... Did it? It has when? Like, uh -huh. really? like, like lately? Yeah. I mean, don't we have to refer it every time we send so it? The next policy meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just been sitting there waiting for the next for this. Yeah. So, when did we do that? Yeah, it was so, months ago. So we don't, ago. Need, the, we don't need the motion to get it there. Well, it's it kind of goes back to what Mr. Westerland was saying. I don't know that. I don't know that our action would have any cause or effect. Whether we. That's why I was saying table it. Yep. We really don't need to send just one, in my opinion. You know, because policy can hear both of them. I'm just putting. It on I would just say we just need to have the discussion, disseminate the information, and then have a bypass. A motion to table if you get a second is non-debatable and has to be voted on. Policy was referred February 4th, 2024. For the next policy committee. Yes, ma'am. Because y'all were anticipating doing this. So y'all went ahead and referred it to get that step out of the way. Okay, well, we'll put it on. I think y'all need to vote on it. Who's the head of policy? Glenn's the chair. Policy, Mr. Huh? Westmoreland. On policy. Then he could just get with you to set a policy committee meeting. And the biggest thing I just want to mention, the reason why we had it on this night, 
is we're trying to get this done before summertime starts. I want families to be able to, last year we dropped the ball. We had issues with skirts. We had people saying we were and weren't going to have it. People waited to buy their uniforms. I, I want to have this done before we go the end of school. I want families to have plenty enough time to get what they need and be ready. Hey, right, Tom, do you have a second to your motion to table? Made a motion to the table. Yes, sir. We have a second? I think it's non-debatable and it's calls for an immediate vote. Do we need a second, Mr. Westmore? Do you have one by Mr. Moore? Yeah. Okay. You got a I do appreciate the work you're putting in this. Appreciate it. I know it's always controversial. <laughs> yeah. Nobody. Say the least. She can laugh all she wants to, but it's worth, it's very controversial. It, it is worth talking and discussing. It's very controversial. controversial. That's why I was laughing. It's controversial for sure. Yeah, it is. Do we have any public input? Hearing none. Do we have any discussion before we close the meeting? No, meeting is adjourned. Yes, ma'am.